Hi guys, uh, this is uh, Jonathan Lambert with the Mathematics Development and Support Service at the National College of Ireland. Uh, and this short video is uh, hopefully going to uh, demystify uh, the, I suppose, the inner workings of the Euclidean algorithm. Uh, and why when we apply the Euclidean algorithm we get the greatest common divisor of two numbers. So this video is going to deal with the logic uh, behind the Euclidean algorithm. But I suppose let's just apply the Euclidean algorithm for a particular example. Yeah. Okay, so let's say we need to find, okay, so we need uh, to find, uh, let's say, the GCD, the greatest common divisor of 14472, and let's say uh, 2736 as an example, okay? So, uh, what we know is we, we have to apply the Euclidean algorithm, which is multiple applications of the division algorithm, yeah? Now, I suppose there's going to be four words that are going to be important for us in the application of the division algorithm, yeah? That represents the, the different parameters uh, within it, okay? Uh, I suppose the first word is the dividend, okay? The dividend, okay? And uh, the second important word is the divisor, okay? So when we apply the division algorithm, the first application of it, yeah, okay, the question that we're asking is how many times does the smaller number, okay, divide into the larger number, okay? The larger number being the dividend, the smaller number being the divisor, okay? The number of times that the divisor divides into this dividend, okay, or the number of times that the smaller number divides into the larger number, uh, is known as the, the quotient, yeah, the quotient, yeah, okay, that's how many times it divides in, okay? Uh, and in a lot of cases, well, in all cases, uh, after division by the divisor into the dividend, we know how many times it goes in, we'll be left with some remainder, possibly zero. So we have a remainder, okay? So these are the four important terms that we're going to use, okay, when we apply the division algorithm uh, multiple times uh, to these two numbers, okay? so. What we do is we take the larger number and we ask how many times does the smaller number divide into the larger number, okay? In this, ca in this case here, okay, uh, we can see that the larger number is 14472. When we divide it by the smaller number, which is 2736, what we can see is it goes in uh, 5.28947368 times, okay? I suppose more importantly, yeah, it goes in five full times. Uh, so what we now know is this, is that 14472 must be equal to 2736 times 5, because it goes in 5 times, plus some remainder. Now what is the remainder? Well the remainder must be, okay, this remainder here, okay, the remainder must be equal to 14472 minus 5 times 2736. So let's calculate that. So it's 14472 minus 2736 times 5, which gives us a remainder of 792. Okay, so just from a, a, a perspective of trying to understand these parameters and what they're called, in this particular situation here, the larger number is known as the dividend, the dividend, the smaller number in the division, okay, is known as the divisor, okay, uh, the amount of times that the divisor divides into the dividend in, is known as the quotient, okay? So just keep that in mind, it's known as the quotient. Uh, the quotient uh, is going to be uh, Q, Q, U, O, T, I, E, N, T. And then after we calculate, I suppose, this magnitude and take it away from the dividend, we know what the remainder is. So this is known as the remainder, okay? Uh, so here's four important words. We have the dividend, we have the divisor, we have the quotient, and we have the remainder. Okay, And I suppose the multiple applications of the division algorithm are going to use these values over and over again. Okay, Well, the first application asks us how many times does the divisor go into the dividend. It goes in the quotient amount of times plus some remainder. The second application is going to take the divisor and ask how many times the remainder goes in, okay? So if I was to start this again, let's say this is our phase, phase, okay? It's phase one, we have the smaller number divides into the larger number five times, so we know that 14472 is equal to 2736 times five plus 792. 
participants the remainder. So now what we do is we take the divisor and we ask how many times does the remainder divide into the divisor. So in this case we have 2736 divided by 792. It goes in approximately, well it goes in three whole times with a remainder. Okay? So what we now know by the division algorithm is that this number divided by this, this becomes the new dividend, this is the new divisor, okay? So we end up with 2736 must be equal to 792 times 3 plus some remainder. What's the remainder going to be? Well it must be equal to this number minus this magnitude. So it's 2736 minus 792 times 3 gives us a remainder of 360, okay? So in this particular application of the division algorithm, this is the dividend, this is the divisor, this is the quotient, and this is the remainder. So now we do it again. This time we take the divisor and the remainder from the last round, which is this round here, and we apply the division algorithm again. How many times does 360, how many times does the remainder divide into 792, the divisor, okay? Well, 792 divided by 360, it goes in about 2.2 times, so it goes in two times, so now what we know is 792 must be equal to 360 times 2 plus some remainder. What's the remainder? Well the remainder must be 792 minus this magnitude here, so it's 792 minus 360 times 2, which gives us a value of a remainder of 72. Now we do it again, this time we look at the divisor in the last round and the remainder. And we ask how many times does the remainder divide into the divisor? So we have 360 okay, must be equal to, well, 360 divided by 72, okay, it goes in five times. Okay? So we have 360 must be equal to 72 times five plus a remainder of, a remainder of zero. Okay, so there's the application. This is the Euclidean algorithm. It's multiple passes of the division algorithm. Okay, so we apply the division algorithm multiple times until we end up with a zero remainder. Okay, once we look at once we have the line with the zero remainder, okay, the division algorithm tells us that the greatest common divisor between our two original numbers that started this process off, okay, is the last non-zero divisor. Okay. So actually what we're saying here is that the greatest common divisor okay, of 14472 and 2736 is equal to 72. And let's just double check that. So we have 14472 divided by 72 goes in 201 times. So it divides into that number with no remainder. Brilliant. And let's try 2736 divided by 72. It goes in 38 times, so we know it divides into this number. Okay. So the key question, I suppose, is why does this process work? Okay. Why, after multiple applications of the division algorithm, okay, and when we look at the non the the last rem non-zero remainder, why is it that this remainder is the greatest common divisor between our two numbers that we started with? Okay. So that was just a quick example, okay? Uh, to logically understand what's going on, okay? Well, let's just, I'll do this in a little bit more rigor in a moment, yeah? Okay? When we generalize the two numbers to be A and B, okay? And we start this process off, keeping track of dividends, divisors, quotients, and remainders, okay? But let's just see what happens with 72. We know 72 divides into 14472, okay? And we know that 14472 